What's up, guys? Brett here, back today with some more Battle Brothers news. Happy to be doing it. Uh, I was worried... Two things. First off, I was worried that they wouldn't be doing a devlog today. Uh, interruptions due to coronavirus. But it seems like they're back on track with doing these devlogs, which I'm happy about. I want as much news as I can get. Secondly, though, my internet was out for a good portion of this morning, which is why this is a little late. Not uh, not Johnny on the spot this morning. I did get the internet to bat to kind of come back up and keep working. Normally, I have to call the company. Uh, I use a local company. Uh, but anyway. Location environments. Awesome stuff. Devlog 135. I'm excited about this. I've wanted location environments. We'll see what all it entails, but just real quick. I've wanted something like this since I first started playing Battle Brothers. It never made sense to me that we fight on open maps. Sometimes with terrain, sometimes without it. Why? Put stuff on the map to make choke points, to make like make pits. Make I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you could do. And we'll see what they've implemented. Maybe they haven't gone far enough. Maybe they've gone too far. Who knows? Let's let's read it together. So, we've previously announced that we're going to portray any location that you're fighting at, such as a graveyard or a brigand camp, also on the tactical combat map. If you haven't done so already, it's highly recommended that you read up on our explanation of why we're doing this and how we're addressing potential issues here. Since this feature is now more or less ready, it's time to take a closer look at how it plays out. So they have showed us some stuff already, but it it was honestly pretty weak from what I saw when they showed the graveyard. It's nice to have the maps themselves reflect where we're fighting. That's a cool visual change, but if it doesn't add anything tactically, then it's cool, but it's not it's it's not something that's going to get me crazy excited. So, first off, location environments will be included for free with the upcoming 1.4 update. This includes graveyards, ruins, and various camps for humans, orcs, and goblins. If you choose to get the Blazing Deserts DLC, you'll also have desert raider encampments and southern ruins in battle. And if you own the Warriors of the North DLC, you'll get to see barbarian camps and villages. But you don't need to own either to see most of the new environments. Okay. Luckily for us, I've got it all. So we'll, we'll be able to see everything. So here we see some ruins. You know, these, honestly, there's not enough of it. It may as well just be random boulders strewn, or boulders or bushes or whatever throughout the map. Um, in order for this to be tactically significant, I mean, look at this area here. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I could put two guys here, two guys here, a guy here, two guys here. And the next thing you know, I've got this kind of, uh, I've made these little choke points, these 2v1s, these, uh, these tiny battlegrounds in the midst of the battle that I get to choose. Um... And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Without that, though, like out here, I mean, if you're fighting in here, you might as well be fighting on open ground. So we'll see. Well, uh, you know, it'll probably depend on the environment we're fighting in. So this is cool. I, I just kind of glimpsed down and saw fortifications. As we've said previously, we want fighting brigands in the open field to feel different from engaging them at their camp. Indeed, where their camp is located and what kind of camp those brigands have should also become more important. Smaller camps may be a loose collection of bedrolls around a campfire, providing a largely cosmetic backdrop for your battle. While larger camps may even have fortifications like wooden palisades that provide cover for the defenders. If a location does have fortifications, you'll see it both in the location's tooltip on the world map and in the engaged screen before you start your assault. That's interesting. I think it's good to know that they have the fortifications, just so you can be prepared to have a disadvantageous starting uh, position versus them um, but if all they do is give cover I mean then it's not really it's just visually different from a rock or a bush so we'll see if there's anything extra with that maybe they'll show it all right a barbarian camp this looks awesome a location with fortifications is harder to assault but it doesn't mean that you'll have to bring siege equipment take a look at the barbarian camp below it's quite a defensible position being the extreme example of a fortified camp built on a hill but we've deliberately kept holes in the palisades those palisades are enough to limit your angles of attack change up things and make you think twice on how to go about your assault but never enough to bring the en entire battle to a halt at a single choke point although the location environment doesn't look like it makes the battle any easier it does make it a lot more predictable where you and the enemy start and more a question of good tactics and less of having luck with spawn locations. And I agree. As I look at this 
And I know it might be kind of small on your guys's. Uh, let's see if I can open the image in a new tab. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm, I made a, an update video for Total Warhammer 2 yesterday where I was looking at images. Uh, I was doing it in Steam, so it was a little bit different, but I should have I should have opened it up to make it bigger for everyone looking at home. Um, and if I sound rushed, guys, I kind of feel rushed because, man, if my internet goes out again while I'm recording and I, I'm getting ready to upload and stuff, I'd be quite, quite aggravated. But anyway, nice touch here. They got their bearskin rugs. They look sad, sad bears. Um, they've got like an idol. This is all cool because this is all stuff that they had to make just to put it in these. So they made new assets for this, so it shows that they're trying. And like they said, they left some big holes, right, in the palisade. So it's really up to you to figure out where you need to attack. So right, there's this huge landing right here. If I'm starting here, then I'd probably try and make the climb up here. And it gives, I mean, it's definitely a huge advantage for them. Maybe I try to go around in this side. Like here, there's no getting up from this area. But if this is an extreme example, that would make sense. Like they said, Palisades and on a hill. This could be very difficult in the late game. Very difficult. Against like Chosen and stuff, trying to take a hill and a choke point. You're going to have to be pretty damn strong to do that. So unlike with field battles, which most of your battles are still going to be, your men don't start in a battle line right in front of your opponents when assaulting locations. You'll still start in formation, but further to the left, whereas the enemy starts in their camp to the right. There's also going to be a couple of instances where the roles are reversed and you have to defend the location against attackers. That's awesome. I was wondering if there would be any opportunity for us to take advantage of Palisades. Hmm. I wonder, man, how cool would it be if you could get like a camp follower who made it so that if you're ever attacked while camping, uh, you start with like a camp location like this. That actually sounds awesome. So you would basically just always be, if an enemy is coming to attack you, you just camp, set up camp, and it's like a fortified camp. That's a cool idea. I wish I had a line to Battle Brothers dudes to see if that was something that they could do over at Overhype. But I like, I'm happy that we'll get a chance to defend. I like defending more sometimes than attacking, and that sounds more fun to me. And, you know, like like it said, like I was saying, ah, I got to start right here. I'm at the bottom of a hill, right? If they have range, they're just going to nuke me before I ever get to the top. If it starts me really far and it keeps them kind of scattered so they're not really in a real formation, that gives you that opportunity to sneak up and get up that hill or to, to kind of take position, right? I can split my forces into three, let's say, one down the middle, one top, one bottom, and kind of surround the camp. And it just kind of depends. I wonder how much vision you'll get. If you get vision of the camp, that also makes it great. Because then you can kind of make a plan of attack. I almost feel like you're going to have vision, but maybe not. But that's where a falcon becomes even more important. You are all, you know, you launch it right at the start of battle. You get full, perfect vision of their camp. And then you know where to assault from. So if you don't want to fight the enemy at their camp, you can attempt to lure out their garrison on the world map to fight them in the open. And then return to easily sack the location afterwards. On the other hand, engaging the enemy at their camp may sometimes be advantageous over luring out their garrison onto difficult terrain. That's because your enemies naturally cut down trees at their camps, making for open spaces, and build their camps only on dry spots within swamps. That's good to know. So instead of having to fight goblins in murky marshlands where your heavily armored men get stuck, you can descend upon their camp and fight them on solid ground. Ultimately, Location environments are about bringing more variety and atmosphere to combat in Battle Brothers and about adding another strategic consideration to the world map. So my overall opinion, guys, if you're curious, is that they didn't, I feel like they just didn't quite go far enough with this. Um, just like every other mechanic in Battle Brothers, there is so much potential here. Um, adding things to environments, I think was kind of a logical next step for Battle Brothers. Um, I've talked before about some of my ideas, like adding cavalry. Um, I mean, that's pretty much a big one. Adding city fights, uh, which is kind of like this, but to the extreme. Um, fighting inside of towns and such. Um, I just feel like it didn't quite go far enough. What we're basically looking at here are cosmetic rocks, which are already in the game. 
This is cool. The camp, the camp idea is cool. I feel like it's it's a big step in the right direction, but perhaps for me, doesn't go quite far enough. Uh, I hate to offer criticism without offering, you know, really constructive criticism. Um, what could they do to change it? Hmm. I thought my camp follower idea, giving, you know, your brothers the uh, the fortification trait, I guess, or while while you're camping, could be cool. Allowing for more defensive battles. I mean, who doesn't love funneling your opponents into a choke point and then slaughtering them? That's the most fun you ever have in a tactical game. I play Total War. I love it. If I can ever funnel all my enemies into one bridge or through one gate and then just smash them with magic or my archer fire, that's all I want to do in games. So having a way to make defensive battles more prevalent could be cool. Or if you're ever attacked near a watchtower or a, especially a fortified town or village, it could just be something they haven't shown yet. There may very well be uh, maps representative of fighting near uh, villages, larger towns, and castles. There might be. Because that does happen. It doesn't happen all the time. Most of your fights are going to take place in open ground or in camps. But there are several quest lines where you have to defend a town, a village, and maybe having some special maps representing that could be cool. But I mean, even something like a guard tower or a watchtower placed... On a map could be cool where you could like um I don't know, I don't know what a good way to represent that is. You don't want it to be like because ladders aren't a thing in this game. Everyone no one has feet. Uh but you could make it hmm. I, I man, I could see I could see an implementation of a guard tower esque position or walls. I don't know what the best way to do it without making it OP would be, but I have faith I have faith in the people at Overhype Studios. Um if this is something that works out well and we are all kind of the guinea pigs testing it, they may go further with it in the future. But for now, it's all positive. There's no negatives here. And I'm excited about it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. I'll hopefully see you next week for even more news. Take care, y'all. Later.